action potentials arrive at axon terminal or synaptic knob. Depolarization of the presynaptic membranes occur. The depolarization causes the voltage-gated calcium ion channels to open, causing the influx of calcium ions into the axon terminal or synaptic knob. Calcium ion signals to synaptic vesicles containing neurotransmitter, in this case acetylcholine. Then, synaptic vesicles containing acetylcholine fuses to the presynaptic membrane. The neurotransmitter acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft by exocytosis. The neurotransmitter then binds to the receptor of the ligand-gated sodium ion channels, causing the influx of sodium ion into the motor end plate. Depolarization of the motor end plates occurs. Finally, Action potential is propagated to the muscle fibers. Action potential propagates along the sarcolemma and down the T tubules. The action potential triggers calcium ions to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium ions then binds to troponin, exposing the myosin binding site of actin filaments. Calcium ions binds to troponin, exposing the myosin binding site of actin filaments. ATP is hydrolyzed when myosin head is unattached. ADP and phosphates are bound to myosin as myosin head attached to actin. Cross bridge or docking occurs. The docking utilizes energy from the hydrolysis of ATP. ADP and phosphate release causes the myosin head to change position and actin filaments to move. Binding of new ATP causes myosin head to return to its resting position. Curare acts on synapse where acetylcholine is used as neurotransmitter. Curare binds to the receptor that the neurotransmitter is supposed to bind. This receptor, also known as nicotinic receptors. The effects are particularly noticeable in neuromuscular junction. Synapses that transmit impulse to the skeletal muscle are blocked, causing paralysis including those involved in the breeding processes. <laughs>